Hey guys, today I'm gonna start by talking about Andrew Yang's path to presidency. And then I'll show you how untrustworthy the current polling methods are and what should be Andrew Yang's actual poll number and why that is so encouraging. All right. So let's start by this um, article written by Kevin Webb from Business Insider. This is a new video game made by Yang Gan right, about the 2020 election. So it lets you fight Donald Trump, Andrew Yang, Bernie Sanders, it is Warren or Cory Booker. <laughs> this is super awesome. This is called Yang 2020 Pass to Presidency. Donald Trump and Andrew Yan face off in the Oval Office. <laughs> so it lets you choose one of your favorite characters, you know, from these presidential candidates, and and then you can fight another character. This is super awesome. Um, I'm so impressed. Okay, so this is an upcoming video game that will be ready from December 30th, I, I believe. And let's, let's see this trailer. Okay, that's, that's, that's funny. So it may contain um, inappropriate for children and, you know, violence. Video games cause violence, and so do I. Freedom <laughs> Wow. So, <laughs> that is like uh, Dragon Ball Z, right? Um, NGI was like, Freedom Dividend! <laughs> Is that I'm not thinking about president. I am running for president. <laughs> so that's like Andrew Yang said. You know, when I uh, when I tell people um, I'm running for president, the most qu common question is of what? <laughs> and that's one of the first questions his wife asked him. And it took her several months to realize that Andrew Yang was serious. Okay. So that's all fun and game. <laughs> it's all fun and games until uh, Yan passes you in the polls. <laughs> all right. So, okay. They also commented that this is drawing inspiration from the popular anime Dragon Ball Z, and Yan loosely resembles the character Gohan. And that's something I'm not totally satisfied with because I think Andrew Yan should actually be Goku, right? <clears throat> Anyways, excuse me. And the candidates are capable of firing energy beams that are a staple in the Dragon Ball Z series. So it will be available from December 30th, price not set. Um, and the debate is December 9th. But Yang's polling numbers are too low to qualify for the stage as of December 9th. False. Yang already qualified. He has qualified every debate so far. 
very comfortably, very confidently. Okay, I guess when uh, this new this news came out, uh, Yang was not qualified at the time. He was just one pole shy of quali being qualified, but now he is. All right. So speaking about polling, um, let's let's talk about this. I mean, do you really trust polling nowadays? That is the question. Um, let's see what other people are saying. <laughs> so this one says, this is from New York Times, the upshot. No one picks up the phone, but which online polls are the answer? Right? So the, the reason that a lot of people don't trust polling is because you know the polling method some of a lot of the, you know polling is done by outdated method like right? who picks up phones nowadays who has landlines and who's willing to talk to you you know an unknown about uh, what he or she would vote for right especially those people who vote for trump you imagine you know, three years ago you know why the polling was so wrong right people just vote you know, silently. And so in this article it says this transition away from live interview type of polling is well underway. And online polls now make up the principal source of data on national public opinion. Um, but the alternatives of traditional polling are not fully mature and you know the absence of a set of clear set of Standards for online polling research has opened the floodgates to unproven surveys of uncertain quality. Yeah, so this article basically is already admits that traditional polling is flawed. It's not trustworthy. And people actually, <laughs> to find out this, um, whether polling is trustworthy, um, I think there is a survey. <laughs> so to find out whether polling method is trustworthy, let's do a poll. <laughs> House Democrats begin impeachment proceedings on President Trump. Oh. No, that's, that's not. Uh, let's see, sorry about that. So this is um, done, this is from The Hill. Okay. What Our exclusive daily poll from The Hill and Harris X poses this question. Do you trust polling at all? Yes, do you. We found that the plurality of Americans yeah. believe most poll results, but do not trust certain sources at 37%. 33% say they don't believe most results, but they do trust certain sources. 19% say they almost never believe polls, yeah. but 12% say they almost always believe polls. Jim, my friends always say, no one ever called me. Yeah. Exactly. That poll can't be real. <laughs> What's going on with the polling industry? Is it working? Yeah, I think so. I think they were born out to be really pretty accurate in the most recent elections in 2018. You know, some hiccups, but I, I think also a challenge is there is a big difference between public polling and private polling. Uh, nowadays, especially with the internet, basically anyone can do a public poll. Uh, you know, you go to... Okay. So, this guy is saying, okay, he's trustworthy. But, look at who is our president. Do you recall that last day of the election night, three years ago? You know, all the polls were saying Hillary Clinton has, you know, 70 or, or even 99% of chance of winning. <laughs> That's just so ridiculous. Um, yeah, so let, let's go back to um, uh, this, this article, okay? Then I'm going to show you what they say about it. Okay, so it, it's hard to set a clear standard, right? That's, that's one of the issues. And um, I think this article, I mean, it tends to say online pollers, uh, posters, um, the online polling is probably more trustworthy because just because the number of you know samples you get right online posters tend to take a model based view of survey results and you don't think 
um, both work simply because of the design, but instead it just uh, because the demographics and other characters can predict vote choice and polls are weighted to match the country's demographics. I think that's actually an advantage of online polling. Um, but not online polling is created equal and um, what we know for sure is that much of the data collected by non-traditional means is of the dirt variety. All but two of these samples fared worse than Pew's online probability panel which was recruited from um, Pew telephone surveys. The online samples that fared where um, raised some concerns about the other online posters if only by implication. YouGov, for instance, consistently fared best in the Pew test in part by using a distinctly uh, sophisticated method of sample selection called synthetic sampling. YouGov selected individuals from its panel of respondents one by one to match the demographic profile of individual Americans and thus match the country's demographics as a whole. That's a good point. So YouGov seems to be a very fair, very uh, you know, re relatively trustworthy um, online polling, right? So let's actually see what YouGov says about Andrew Yan's um, polling number, okay? So it's actually relatively difficult to find this article. It took me a while to search, but this is a mystery yoga poll at 11% for Andrew Yan. Okay, so it says this poll was conducted by Brown University alongside YouGov. Why it is not the national poll is not qualifying and would not have contributed to the RCB average. Here it comes now, so it comes out now. It's very weird because it was conducted in, uh, you know, October, right, October 10th to 11th, but was only released on December 2nd. And Yan is polling at 11%. So this is dramatically higher than any other polling numbers of Andrew Yan, right? From 4 to 6%. So if you look at this number, right? Joe Biden at 25, Warren 23, Sanders 13, Yan 11. So that's number four in the nation. And that also explains why you <laughs> it's not easily found. And it was not released until December, um, early December. Right, it was conducted in October, so those people just thought this is an outlier, it's untrustworthy. But it is the online poll, it is the YouGov poll, we just said that it fared probably the best because the methodology that it, it takes. So what is this telling us? Okay, so um, for those of you who still are kind of suspicious about where Andrew Yang stands. Um, let's take a big data approach, okay? Let's take a look at um, the YouTube favorability, okay? So for fair comparison, so we um, take, let's take a look at, this is um, YouTube video on everything Andrew Yang said at the American debates in Atlanta, that's the, the fifth debate, right? Um, this is posted by NAC, New York, and you can see here that there are 410,000 views since November 20th, and among them, 22,000 like this, and 585 don't like it. So that's, what's the ratio? It's, it's, like, it's, it's more like 40 to 1 ratio, right, or, or 35 to 1, and whereas if you take a look at other top contenders, this is everything Joe Biden said during the debate in Atlanta, the fifth debate, <laughs> look at the number of views, it's 25,000, it's, it's like an order of magnitude is smaller, or, yeah, so that, does that, what does that tell us? And look at the like to dislike ratio. So 
170 likes and 558 dislikes. <laughs> That's a shame. And, and how can you say Joe Biden is leading in a poll when so many people don't like him and his video has so few clicks? That's just <laughs> unbelievable, right? Very, very contradictory. And um, let's let's take a look at other candidates, okay? So this is this is Elizabeth Warren, twenty thousand views, even fewer than Joe Biden. And look at the like dislike ratio; it's you know it's slightly better, but still more dislikes than likes. Okay, and let's see Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Okay, so this is actually comparable to Andrew Yang, so 212,000 views. And the like to dislike ratio is about 10 to 1. So this is pretty good. I mean, uh, not as good as Andrew Yang, 35 to 1, but you know, 10 to 1, I, I, I give Bernie that. You know, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, so still, Andrew Yang has the best, right? The most number of views and um, the best like the last ratio. So, okay, male Pete, uh, 50,000, and you know, it's about one to one, like the like, dislike ratio. So, <clears throat> so you can see all these so called top contenders, right? Top candidates, um, they don't do well when it comes to big data analysis. So, YouTube is a free platform, everyone can access it, everyone can, f you know, free comment. Right, and <clears throat> and that shows actually that gives us important information where Andrian stands, and um, just to uh, complete this analysis, let's take a look at another video. So this is um, I'll go from YouTube, um, South Carolina Democratic Convention, and that happens. Um, I think in the summer, about five months ago. So June 22nd, 2019. And this one has 180,000 views. But that's not surprising because it has all the candidates, all the top candidates speaking. Not just the top candidates, actually almost all the candidates from the uh, Democratic Party. And um, the like to dislike ratio here is not important because remember, this is a seven hour long video and that has all the candidates um, so you can dislike or dislike because of you know any of the candidates but look at the comments so yeah look at these comments There's, there are 16,000 comments and all the top comments let's, let's look all, all about Yan I'm Hui Yan Yan2020 um, and he has my boy <laughs> wow Yan is gaining more and more supporters. Proud to be Yan Gan member. <laughs> it's not black, not right. It's forward Yan Gan all day. It's all Yan. If you go down, okay, this is funny. So it says Yan polling numbers nationally two to three percent on YouTube ninety nine percent exactly. What does that tell us, right? It's all about Yan. Remember, there are all these candidates speaking, and this this guy even says skip to um, three hours ten ten to see Yan crush it. <laughs> Yan starts from here. Okay, Yan is a phenomenon. It's incredible. Someone with no political experience is able to speak to clearly the problems facing the country and the solutions to best address that. His polling may be pretty low just now, but there's a moment coming very, very soon, and the whole country gets on board the Yan train. I can't wait. Wow, <laughs> this is incredible. Are you amazed? Are you convinced? Okay, it's all about Yan. It, it's a Yan train. <laughs> it's like a Yan train. It is. Okay. <laughs> it just goes on and on. Nobody comments about any other candidates. 
So you see the level of enthusiasm, right? I mean, these, these are real people behind the comments, behind those clicks, behind those likes and dislikes. Okay, so Yan was pulling 2 to 3% at that time. Um, okay, so this is by the tradition polling method. And right now it's already doubled. It's 4 to 6% now. Um, and we see this, you know, this trend, right? Everybody sees that. Everybody sees tr the potential. And even Chuck Todd yesterday, right? Um, we analyzed that. We showed Chuck Todd is actually kind of on board Yang Gan, right? It's just, <laughs> he still um, couldn't announce it. <laughs> um, but he had a lot of respect for Andrew Yan now. And uh, so did... Um, uh, with other people like Tucker. All right, so um, last but not least, let's take a look at another type of online polling, and which is who won the fifth Democratic debate. So this is uh, from Havi.com. Okay, so this from Havi.com that shows Andrew Yang at 40% out of uh, 5,100 seven votes and that is trailed by Tom Steyer 20% okay so again this is out of 12,000 votes and if we take a look at um, the third debate this is again from happy.com Andrew Yang at 35.6% um, Bernie second and 19% and Joe Biden 11% um, and then, yeah, and, and then the, this is who won the fourth presidential debates. And this is, again, we have Andrew Yan at 75% out of almost 9,000 9, votes. Okay, so to conclude, what should Yan's polling number be like? It's more likely to poll than this. Okay, so x times 4% is nationally, um, plus 1 minus x times, let's say, 35%. Um, um, that's for, you know, people who are more likely to go online, right? So x represent who um, do not go online very often. So let's just say x is 0.5, right, 50-50. Then he should be polling about 20%. That is the math. And of course, depending on the x value, they have different results. And I'm being conservative here, 35%. Remember, all these, you know, uh, data will show had Yan at 40% or higher, right, from the last three debates. So I hope that uh, you're convinced that Andrew Yan should actually poll much higher than um, the current poll shows, and that he actually may have a path to win the presidency. Thank you for your attention.